Welcome to this video. Amarin's Ancestor of All Humans Hypothesis. Introduction. This video will present the hypothesis that the Amarins are the ancestors of all modern humans. I am not an expert in the field and this video is not peer-reviewed. Nevertheless I base arguments and hypotheses on the most relevant and research markers and do not accept nor present severe paradigms. I call this hypothesis also the Out of America's Hypothesis. While Africa plays an early role in this Out of America's Hypothesis, it plays a role much more in the background especially when Out of America's, especially Out of South America takes its maximum pace. South America plays an early and the dominant role, but just as in the case of Africa the role of South America fades away, at least as cradle and root for the latest groups and turnovers, this while North America takes up or over the leading role, until the latest of the important turnovers like the Yamnea or Horseman turnover that end roughly 4,000 years ago or with the Bronze Age collapse. South America and next North America play the most important part of the population of the world and will define the face of the earth, modern humans, migrations, conquests, economies and modern politics. Since Africa is not really significant early in the population of the planet, I simplify the presentation by leaving it out altogether in this introduction. Obviously the Out of Americas hypothesis starts in the Americas it starts by the Amarind group Q. One can easily see that Q compared with all groups is massive, this even without considering any subhaplogroup. Compared to Q, African A or African Adam and B are insignificant in all relevant aspects. Some could think this was to expect, but it is not, because an ancestor should be giant and thriving to support and sustain its global expansion, this before another and even a descendant takes over the main role this also to avoid founder and bottleneck effects that make a group incapable to populate significant areas, let alone the planet. If Q would come at the end of the population of the planet it should not have become the giant it became, and should not have occupied pretty much the rest of the world before it started to lose frequency and area to other more recent groups. Q should not have become the giant, especially not in so many of the major and relevant continents. When considering descendants, even in Africa Q becomes a giant although in the case of Africa this is indirect and through descendants. In order to simplify I leave this presence of Q in Africa out altogether and leave this for later videos. I limit this part with saying that Q is or rather became also a giant in Africa because of E but also A and B and even mtDNA L and M that are all amarant and derived from Q, as I will present in other videos. For now what matters is that on the global scale A and B are dwarfs, and Q is a giant on its own. Q in Europe and no A nor B in Europe. Amaranth Q in all major continents and no A nor B in other major continents, this with African A nor B not even significant in Africa itself. C and Q have their roots in the Americas and since there is only Q and C in the Americas, and Q is close by and even wrap C, C is a descendant of Q and simply cannot be descendant of yet another group that is not around. Anyway, both C and Q come out of the Americas. What is clear is that there is no A nor B close by or close enough, and even if they had been close enough, they certainly would be too small to give basis and support to C anyhow. This apart from the significant genetic and morphological differences between A, B and L on one hand and Q and C on the other hand. The facts and history show that A nor B could support and sustain not even themselves and are de facto extinct at least in a global context. This is the end of the first part of a series about the Amarin's Ancestors of All Humans Hypothesis. Thank you for watching.